Chubba Chubba, the girls are here to stay. Though chubby or slender, we're mad about the gender. The girls are here to stay. Last year's news is no longer news. Last year's calendar is gone. Last year's shoes look like last year's shoes. But what goes on and on? Girls! We praise them in sonnets. We deck them out in bonnets. Who cares about the bills we have to pay? Girls! 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 Girls are here to stay. Never been so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You're a flower blooming every hour with a power and a spell that tells me. So well that you will always, in all ways, you'll always be so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You never look so. So beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful, Come here and I'll caress you. Girls are here to stay. Sighs of sight and the thrills I tried last a moment, then they're gone. Countless things I have cast aside. But what goes on and on? Hey, you. Girls! Since he looked mad at them, no one went on to Adam. He wouldn't have it any other way. Within a mile of this theater, I won't go on. What are we supposed to be? Support for a chorus boy? Oh, oh Doc, you didn't have to do this. This is so silly. I... That's what, it's not for you. Oh, sneak, you read the card. You... Ah, really, this is one of the most exciting nights of my, my career, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I'm just thrilled beyond words, and I'd like to have my fellow troopers come out here and share it with me. <laughs> All right, I'll share it with them. Chicken-headed idiot. You've ruined one of my shows for the last time. Please, Mr. Fraser, if you give him one more chance, I'll work with him tonight and all day tomorrow. I'll straighten him out. Listen, Daisy, with the time you've spent trying to straighten out this pretzel, you could have become a star on Broadway. Goodbye for the last time. Are you hurt, Stanley? Only my pride. But it goes pretty deep. And let's go home. We can still catch the ferry. All right.
Josie, be sure to take Rasputin for his walk. And don't give him any more of that peanut brittle that Snodgrass keeps sending me. He was coughing again last night. Yes, sir. And what should I do about the flowers? Oh, yes. Who sent them? Lilies for your lover's funeral. If I can't have you, nobody can. There's no name. Why? He won't be able to go on tomorrow. What's going to happen to my show? Where am I going to find another leading man with Alan's looks, voice, talent? How can my public discover me if Fraser keeps kicking me out of his shows? In the chorus, you've danced behind a lot of big stars, Daisy, and from the back, don't I have as much as any of them? More, Stanley. You know how I've always felt about you. Or do you? One fan doesn't make a star. To me, you're a star. But I suppose that doesn't matter. With all those beautiful girls in the show, you never even look at me. I look at you a lot. But you look at the others all the time. Yeah. Isn't it awful? Oh, there's no use kidding myself, Daisy. I know I'm a failure. Failing is the only thing I've ever been a success at. Look at me. The world's oldest living chorus boy. You should have changed into your own clothes. In midair? Aren't you cold? Cold? I'm beginning to chip. Let's go back inside. Oh, these clothes get more laughs than Weber and Fields. Would you like my coat? Don't be ridiculous. It's not my size. Well... At least take this. Thanks. Oh, I wonder where I can get another show to work in. You don't have to be a chorus boy. I'd be proud of you if you worked in your father's coal business. Me? Never. There may be coal dust in my bathtub, but there's grease paint in my veins. All I need is a chance. Of course. But you have to realize it takes work. If you'd really buckle down, you might even be the juvenile lead. What's the age limit on juveniles? No, no, that's not my big moment. I can see it all now. The night of nights, stardom comes to Stanley Snodgrass. My name and lights, audience is cheering, the world at my feet. Wine, caviar, a gold toothpick. I will be on top of the top. I will be the cream of the crop. I will be the man to desire. The flame and the fire, a star to admire. Of course you will, Stanley, because you've got one thing that stands out like a light in a tunnel. What's that? You got class and lots of polish. You got class, you're baby dollish. You're a comer, and like I told the plumber, baby, you got class. Yeah, I got class. Now can't you tell it? I got class, and I can sell it. You can put your money on the butcher, he says. You got class. I will be the toast of New York and Paris. Whatever chance you make the most of, I hope you'll have time, place, room for me. Come on, smile, and show the pearlies. I got style for all the girlies. I'm a swell boy. And like I told the bellboy, baby, you got class, you got dash. I got dash. You have a dash. And every emotion. You got splash. I got splash. You make a splash. Just like the ocean. I'm a cookie. And like I told my bookie, Wilbur, I got class. Son, yeah? you got class. Thanks. As a dancer, baby, you're the answer. A world man dancing class. I 
I'm gonna sail my dream boat to the isle where all of the big shots dwell. I wanna show them all my first class snot grass style. I know that I'll ding dong ring the bell. You got class. I got class. You'll get ahead. I'll be a winner. You got class. I got class. That's what I said. I'll buy the dinner. Won't you tell her? Won't you tell a fella? Will this all come to pass? I'm alive. You got Bill. I got class. You got him. You got class. C-L-A-S-S You got charm C-H-A-R-M You got poise P-O 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 Oh, that teacher, why was she beautiful? P-O I got class C-L-A-S-S Yes, most of all You I got class Good night, Daisy. Good night, Stanley. Thanks for the ride, Mr. Hackenschmidt. It's all right, Stanley. Just remember, you're helping me clean stables Sunday. I'll remember. The wind is right. It's my Stanley. He's come home in a cab. What's he doing? Pulling it? Stop talking that way about my boy. Just annoys you that he isn't your real son. Just annoys me that he ain't real. Stanley's a nice boy, all right, but I'm glad he ain't mine. Stanley! Oh, oh mother, mother, you need to wait it up. Oh, I was too excited to sleep. How many curtain calls did you take? Oh. Stanley, four? Five curtain calls, did you hear that? When's payday? Oh, I'm middle class. Thursday. When we open on Broadway, you must all be my guests at Rector's. We'll have a cold bottle and a warm bird, drink wine from Mother's Slipper, out of the season strawberries, hives for everyone. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> but we're forgetting. Poor Stanley must be exhausted after dancing all night. Come on over here and sit down, my little twinkle toes. <laughs> and I'll get Father's slippers for you. Albert, take them off. I would describe my triumph in great detail, but I must save my voice. Hurry it up, Daddy. I am not your daddy. I'm your mother's husband, and I refuse to be responsible for any mistakes but my own. I think he insulted one of us. Mr. Snodgrass here? Which one, Mr. Snodgrass, the cold eater, or Mr. Snodgrass, the toast of Broadway? That one. Well, well, if it isn't good old Otto. What's new? And remember, there's a lady present. Mr. Fraser sent me. Yeah, well, <laughs> excuse us, folks. It's a messenger from my producer. Shop talk, you know. Eighteen dollars a week and messengers. And you think that dumb son of mine is only a dentist? Well, maybe Stanley is a successful play actor, but I still think if a man don't work for a living, the least he can do is steal. doing with Stanley's clothes. These are Mr. Fraser's clothes. Hold on, young man. What was that message you brought? I just came to get these. As of tonight, Snodgrass ain't with the show. Oh, I see. Uh, all of a sudden, it's time for me to leave. Good night. One side, Emily, while I butter the toast of Broadway. Don't move, Ma. Emily, 19 years ago, you asked me to let that boy quit his job and have a fling at show business. Well, his fling is flang. Starting tomorrow, he's going to work. Work? If I hear that word once more, I'm going to run away from home. Work! 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 Oh, that did it. Stanley! My boy! Take one last good look. Please don't leave. Oh. Guess I'll run away next spring. Well, Miss Bailey, has there been any man in your life, I mean aside from Mr. Trent here, who might think that he has a claim on you, someone who wanted to marry you? Only that faker, Jack Bennett. Bennett? What about him? Yes, what about him? Oh, he's just a man who mistook a smile for a promise. He's harmless as a baby. You recognize this man? Why, that's Bennett. 
He looks about as harmless as a runaway freight. Our handwriting samples check with the note on the lilies, too, Captain. Miss Bailey, your Mr. Bennett is Jack the Slasher. No, he couldn't be. He's one of the most vicious killers that ever stalked New York. This is the first time one of his victims has escaped. And what a break for us. When Jack the Slasher strikes again, I'll be there. Good for you. I won't be. Well, you can't let him kill poor Alan. The Slasher knows how you two feel about each other, and that's going to bring him out of hiding. But if anything happens to Alan, my show is ruined. I appreciate your concern, Fraser. Human lives are at stake, man. We must gamble one to save many. As Miss Bailey's gentleman friend, you're our only hope. Use me as bait? Yes. No, thanks. Wait a minute. Why can't we use another gentleman friend? All we need is somebody to take over Alan's part. I'll find some simpleton conceited enough to believe that Irene is madly in love with him. For Alan's sake, I could convince anyone. An excellent idea. But where can we find a clay pigeon? I appreciate all the nice things you're saying about me, Mr. Fraser, and that suite at the Waldorf. But why am I riffraff one night and Miss Bailey's leading man the next? Stanley. Yes, Irene. That answers my question. Thank you. No, why didn't you listen to me weeks ago? That's right, Stanley. She wanted to replace me with you after the first performance. What a coincidence. So did I. Stanley has what the part needs. Fire, virility, passion. Manliness, charm, suede top shoes. Your turn. All this talent under my very nose. <laughs> and you couldn't smell it. <laughs> Ordinarily, I'd resent being kicked out of the show. But Stanley, I bow to the better man. You know I had you all wrong, Trent. You're not quite as dumb as I thought you were. Where is he? If he's still in bed, I'll tan his lily-colored eyes. Shh. I give him a job, and the first thing he doesn't do is show up. Shh. Don't shush me. This isn't the public library. Please gather Mr. Snodgrass's wardrobe. We're moving him to the Waldorf. Yes, sir. Oh. The Waldorf? What's he going to be, a bus boy? You and Irene are going to be the greatest romantic team since... Napoleon and Josephine. Anthony and Cleopatra. Uh, could I have a $5 raise, Harry? $5? I'm going to pay you $100 a week. How do you like that? That I like. And I'll foot all your bills. Tonight, you are a star. My son. My daughter-in-law. My public. Come, Irene. Hitch your wagon to a star. Work on your high notes, Trent. Oh. Security, I've been looking for you. We need protection. Where are all your police? There won't be a uniformed man in sight. I'm clearing out myself. I don't want anything to frighten off the slasher. Well, what happens when he strikes? My best detective, Logan, is in there. Snodgrass thinks he's his valet. Now, at the first sign of the slasher, he'll spring the trap, and you can depend on Logan. He's already fooled your star, Snodgrass. Please, don't call him my star. He's a sitting duck for one night only. Look, Stanley, we haven't much time. Do you want to go over your cues again? Well, there's no need, after all, a man with 20 years' experience, some of it on the stage. Five minutes, Mr. Snodgrass. Well, I guess this is it. Oh. Now remember, Stanley, hmm? when we're out there together, give them everything you've got. But remember, save your heart for me. I'll save more than that if you so desire. Well, let's make history. Oh, and Harry, in the finale, watch those idiot chorus boys with that table bit. Harry, please, please have. Please, Jack the Slasher, wherever you are, strike tonight so Snodgrass can't ruin more than one performance. I'm sorry for your show, Fraser, but this is the only way to bait the trap. I'll be waiting for you on stage, my pet. I have a few changes to make in the production. Fine. Gosh, good luck tonight, Mr. Snodgrass. Oh, thank you, Sonny. Just watch me from the wings and someday you too may be a star. You really think so, Mr. Snodgrass? Just stick with it. What is your name, Sonny boy? Crosby, sir. What? Crosby? What's your first name? Bang. It's pretty close.
Just follow me. Desire, desire drives me insane. The feeling, the fire, the pleasure, the pain. Loving you, needing you. But is it all in vain? I can't escape the torment. I can't escape the torment of lips so warm and tender. My eyes demand surrender, but there's no sign from you. Happy dreams of you. Come on, Slasher, kill him. Yet I must go on without you Until you say you care I still think Mr. Fraser isn't going to give you the sack, sir. Give me the sack. He'll tie me up in it. Cheer up, Stanley. After all, this was your first night as a star. No one could expect you to be perfect. I did. Would you like to take me home now? I can't. Daddy sent me a telegram saying if I don't come home tonight, all will be forgiven. Look at that. I can't face myself. Will I see you tomorrow, Stanley? Oh, don't come to the bottom of the river just for that. <laughs> Folks, I'm sorry, but anybody could have knocked down that tent in the circus scene. I... See, it wasn't my fault that the tenor ad lived that high note. I just backed into him with my sword. I... Oh, I'm almost sure that they'll think it was an accident that I stepped on Irene's dress. The police won't close the show. It's just... You see, I... Well, hello, Bang. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thanks. Ooh. Oh. Bumbling idiot! Clumsy! Oh! Stumbling nincompoop! Stupid, moronic, beetle brain. You all right now? Yes, I think so. Fine. Now let's go tell Stanley how great he was. All right. For you, darling, for you. But if Jack doesn't strike soon, I'll go mad. You'll go mad. I'll go broke. Stanley, wait! Stop him! I know! That's all right. You don't have to hold me. I'll pay you back for all the damage. There's more money than you think in the coal business. Black diamonds, that's what they are. Look, Stanley, who's talking about money? Release our star. He mustn't be bruised. I mustn't? If they harmed one hair on that pretty little head, my heart would break, darling. Irene, Harry, then you're not disappointed in me? Disappointed? We had Alan standing around in case something went wrong. <laughs> you lived up to every one of my expectations. What were you expecting? Uh, man, what a performance. I haven't seen anything like it since Fink's Mules. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you... Uh, come, <laughs> darling. We have a date at Delmonico. Oh. Yeah. I, lucky boy. Oh, Delmonico's not like this. Wait till I change into Alan's tails. 
Pink Smules. Must have been headliners. But isn't it wonderful, Stanley? I just heard the news. Yes, and five minutes ago, you thought I was through. <laughs> oh, well, stop by the house and tell Mother not to wait up for me, will you? And remind me tomorrow to send her a five-pound box of money. Oh, Stanley. Mm -hmm. Here are a couple of hundred in advance. I am a lavish tipper, you know. Well, that's show business for you. Fifteen minutes ago, I was ready to jump in the river, and here I am practically dancing at Delmonico's. Oh, we artists. Oh, bang. My little friend, how are you? Oh. <laughs> Limp along. Irene, my sweet, I find you a baggage of mystery. I'm a woman, Stanley. I've been around, I can tell. <laughs> Please, control yourself, silly boy. <laughs> you have approximately three minutes more alone with me, my dear. After that, we'll be at Delmonico's, and it's every girl for herself. Now, I'll take my chances. But why gamble? Why go to Delmonico's? Why not your suite at the Waldorf, or better still, my suite? My suite? We can dismiss the servants, candlelight and wine, have a blindfolded violinist out in the balcony, and inside, just you and me alone. Is that what you're suggesting? Good heaven, Stanley. <laughs> Logan, to the Waldorf, and don't spare the beast. Oh, go, please, go. Please, yes, Stanley, I planned on Delmonico's. I want all of New York to know all about us. But first, I want us to know all about us. Ah, oh, there's some things that even I haven't found out about me yet. something, Daisy? This is the first time I see you without snodgrass on your arm. And you look great. I don't feel great. You went out with Miss Bailey. That's her hard luck. I'm making a new arrangement on this. It, it needs more heart. When you love someone. Yeah, that's Miss Bailey's song. I know. You'd think it was written for me. When you love someone as I love him You don't stop to wonder why I love him At times he'll adore and then he'll ignore you. Still, you know, you'll never let him go. Don't care what he does, I'm all for him. When I'm all alone, I call for him. And though at times there's sorrow, tomorrow is new. When you
Oh, no. No, there'll be no kibitzing. Take the night off, Logan. Uh, Sandy, may I have my glove now? I feel half undressed without it. Why don't you remove the other one? I was thoughtful of Harry to reserve adjoining suites for us, his and hers. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 whoops. Don't get lost. Uh, Logan, I told you to take the rest of the night off. A gentleman's gentleman never takes the night off, sir. Yes, but does a gentleman's gentleman stay when the gentleman wants the gentleman's gentleman to leave the gentleman with the lady? A gentleman is never alone with a lady, sir. You're now working for a cad. By the way, the money's the same. Oh. Where's Logan? Tonight belongs to Snodgrass. I'll let Logan get his own girl. <sighs> I sent him away. I knew you'd want it that way. Oh, what a candy counter. <laughs> I oh, oh, I'm so I sorry. Oh, oh. Well, kiss it and make it well. Oh, later, darling, later. Oh. Will you excuse me first? I'd like to get into something more comfortable. Yes, you must be in agony. Please do. Uh, I won't be long. Now, take 30 or 40 seconds. You can seconds. get comfy, too. Oh, I can? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fraser's room, please. Hello, Harry. Harry, you've got to come up here immediately. He is sweet. Josie took the night off, and I'll be alone with him. You can handle him, Irene. He's harmless. Harmless? Oh, you should know what I went through in that cab. Pawing, mauling, grasping. All that saved me is that I'm stronger than he is. All right, Irene, I'll be up in a little while. I guess we both have to make sacrifices. But just remember this, whatever he does to you, he's doing much worse to my show. Alarming, isn't it? You come right up here. All I have for protection is Rasputin. And he likes Stanley. Hurry! Kill anybody who came between us. Room service? This is Stanley Snodgrass. Yes, Matinee Idol, Broadway star, Bond Vivant, and Good Time Charlie. Will you send up some champagne, some bourbon, some brandy, and some sherry? That's what I said, sherry. I have something cooking here. Oh, oh and by the way, send up a sack of caviar. All right, then a jar. Okay, a and one more thing. One blindfolded violinist, please. Toot sweet? No, I don't mean you. That's an expression, fool. Thank you. peeking through a keyhole and getting the busy signal. <laughs> Jack, listen to me. You know I didn't love you. You know I didn't. You loved me until Snodgrass came into your life. No. At first I thought it was that singer Trent. No. no. Now I know it was Snodgrass. No. Every time I hear it, Irene Bailey and Stanley Snodgrass. Irene and Stanley. Bailey no. and Snodgrass. This is what I'm going to do to your lover. Oh, Logan. The slasher. My bedroom. Not enough that I live like a star, I must smell like one, too. <coughs> Aimé moi. That's French for the mating call of a moose. I think. I better not put too much of this stuff on. For safety's sake. Irene's, of course. Sorry, Daisy, but there are times when a young lady shouldn't watch a young man. Things go according to schedule. This may be one of those times. I'll be back. Jack actually believes he made a mistake in attacking Alan. He thinks Stanley's been my real love all along. 
Too bad he got away. But we'll find him, Miss Bailey. Oh, but I can't go through with it, Lieutenant. Not even to him. It's murder. You've got to. Either Trent or Snodgrass is going to be the target. Now make up your mind. Irene. I'll be outside. Come on, rescue. And you better be on my side. Go, you dog. Oh, I thought you were going to change into something more comfortable. Anything on fire. And how? Well, that, yeah, that's a gentleman's perfume. That's my own blend, my dear. It's called Blue Snodgrass. You have to have a license to use it. Does it do something to you? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. But if we open the window, I no, think no, no, I'll be no. All right. Don't let the ordinary air in here. We, it wouldn't mix you. I, it's the waiter. Enter his vows. It's French, you know. I speak a lot of it in Paris. I'll handle this, waiter. Thank you, sir. <laughs> My treat! <laughs> Harry, what a delicious surprise. Well, how is everything, Stanley? Comfortable? The, uh, the suite large enough? Oh. I want you to be completely satisfied. It's adequate, Harry. Thanks for dropping in, and good oh, night. please, Stanley. One toast with our producer. All right. One. But remember, I can count. To us? Mmm, 1898. Domestic and terribly flat. Stanley, that's the water. Well, I distinctly ordered champagne, the very best, Corona Corona. And what happened to my blindfolded violinist? Uh, they're leading him upstairs now. But first of all, a toast to my stars. With the finest brandy in all New York. Brandy warms me. Warms you? <laughs> Shake hands with a volcano. Take a lot of warming up to catch up to me, I want to tell you that. There you are, Donald. Thank you, this will do. Here you, here. To my leading lady, my producer, and me. Drink up and beat it. <laughs> Logan! This boy is really stiff. We better get him into the bedroom. What'd you put in that brandy? Starch? Hmm? Honey, what'd I do? I... Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, Logan. Logan. Uh, yes, sir. About last night. Uh, yes, sir. Tell me, uh, did we have a blindfolded violinist? Oh, to be sure, sir. And you played beautifully. And while I was playing, what was Miss Bailey doing? After we put you to bed the third time, she left. You mean she walked out of me? Oh, not until after she blindfolded you, sir. Oh, I, I guess she couldn't help herself. My eyes drive her mad. Your breakfast, sir. Oh, now let's postpone breakfast, say, until around supper, huh? Symbols. Oh. Your barber is waiting, Mr. Snodgrass. Really? I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Oops. I'm getting down. Tell the barber to bring two razors. He's going to shave the biggest head he ever saw. Barber, he's waiting. Yes, sir. Oh, please, turn off those mice. <sighs> What's the matter? You look like you're seeing a ghost. I'm beginning to feel like one. Oh, sorry, I've been working too hard. Run down. <laughs> you talk about being run down to a man who spent the night with Irene Bailey. 
Be gentle. This isn't me you're shaving, it's my hangover. They tell me I have the honor of shaving the Mr. Stanley Snodgrass. That's right, hiring Bailey's leading man on stage and off. So I've heard. Hey, hey, what about the lather? What about a hot towel? Ah, yes, a hot towel over your eyes. Well, you're pretty rough for a barber. In fact, you're more of a butcher. I told you to be gentle, I've got a brandy head. I shall remove your head and your beard in one delicate operation. If you do a good job, I may make you my private barber for life. I assure you, there will never be another barber for you. That's what I like, confidence. It'll all be over in a moment. Why? Why? Oh, good work, Logan. Yeah. Yeah, ho hold on. Sid. Sid, call Jersey. Strip Snodgrass's billing off the marquee and put Trent's back up. Yeah, and hurry Alan over to the theater immediately. No, I do not want Snodgrass back in that chorus. Hold on. Logan. Logan, did the slasher kill Snodgrass? Too bad. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Only last night, this was a handsome cabin. You were Irene Bailey. Irene, whatever happened to us? Especially you. We can't want you to forget them show people. Just keep your mind on delivering this call to the laundry boy. Forget. Last night, I was on stage facing your glamorous audience. Now look at the view I got. Well, here's the laundry. Open up that chute, boy, and I'll line her up. Mm. Smells like a New England boiled dinner. Oh, Mr. Newbold, the boiler pressure's getting low. Better get some coal in a hurry. Are you sure that's the coal chute? Why don't you clean your glasses, Mr. Hungerford? After all your years in this business, you ought to know when you see a hole, you drop coal in it, don't you? Get that tailgate open, boy. Close the gate, Mr. Hungerford. Turn off the coal. Wrong shoot. Two days of ironing gone. Sign right here, Mr. Newgold. I just... Oh. Mr. Hungerford! Mr. Hungerford! Hold your ground, boy. I'll go get your daddy. No, no, I'm already outnumbered. Mr. Hungerford! Captain Garrity. Alert all precincts and blockade the area. Jack the Slasher's escaped. Kill one of our men. Find Logan. Yes, sir. He was here. The Slasher. He threatened to kill Stanley. Opening night, right on the stage. Then Snodgrass must go back in the show. You can't do that to me. Snodgrass is the only decoy we have to lure the slasher. No matter what you have to promise him, I want Snodgrass on that stage. Hey, here's a lump we missed, Daddy. Stop calling me Daddy. I know I'm not your fault. Not Mama's fault. Here they are. Oh, Mr. Fraser, take me. Take me, Mr. Fraser. Please take me, take me away from this drudgery. Let me come back to the theater where I can share myself with the world. Stanley. They deserve... Stanley. Hmm. That's why I'm here. What? What, you mean Daisy spoke to you? I can come back to my job in the chorus? Chorus? Huh? The show opens tomorrow night on Broadway, starring Stanley Snodgrass. And Irene Daly. Oh, darling, I have been fickle. I, I'm so sorry. But if you come back to the show, I'll never leave you. As long as I live? As long as you live. 
Oh. Stanley, make up your mind once and for all. Do you want to go back to the theater and starve for glory? Or do you want to learn the coal business, like Mr. Hungerford, and be set for the rest of your days? Which is it to be, Stanley? Miss Bailey? Or Mr. Hungerford? Steady employment, three meals a day, clothing, shelter, family, security, a future. And what has she got to offer me? I'll find out. Must be crazy. Irene's the crazy one. That Bailey woman again. Every time she whistles for him, he dumps you like a load of coal. Oh, she can't be serious. She's only trying to make Alan jealous. Well, she's not going to fool Stanley any longer. I'll take care of that right now. Fifteen minutes, Miss Bailey. Thank you. Hurry and get dressed, darling. The moment Jack strikes his stand, he must be ready to go on. It's true. You vampire. I beg your pardon. I know just what you're up to. What do you mean? Don't play innocent with me. I'm onto your scheme and I'm not going to let you get away with it. You can't stop us now. I will stop you. I'll warn Stanley. You're too late. Jack the Slasher believes that I love Stanley. He'll try to kill him no matter what you do. We have plain clothesmen stationed all over the theater. The moment the Slasher makes his move, we'll grab him. I hope he moves before Snodgrass ruins my show. I'm so glad, Mr. Fraser, change the opening number. You'll make a beautiful sultan. Oh, splendid. Tonight will be as much your triumph as mine, Mother. You've been preparing me for this part ever since I was three years old when you pierced my ears. It was one of those happy little accidents. You were sitting on my lap when I was knitting. Yes. Those Stanley, were... if you go out on that stage tonight, you'll be murdered by Jack the Slasher. Oh, that's ridiculous. I never even met Jack the Slasher. I wouldn't allow my boy to associate with such a person. Stanley, you must believe me. Jack the Slasher's in love with Irene, and he'll kill anyone who comes between them. He thinks she loves you. She doesn't love you. I do. Oh, so that's it. You're making all this up because you're jealous. Oh, I wish I was a girl so I could fight over me. Oh, you dazzler. There she is. What's she been telling you? Oh, some wild tale. She's probably been seeing too many of those magic lantern shows. Oh, that's using your head, boy. Don't you believe her. It's the truth. Tell him what you told me, Miss Bailey. Daisy, you have five minutes to change. No, I don't want to hear any more of this nonsense. Stanley, listen to me. They're all in this against you. <laughs> you don't think I'd believe that child's absurd story. Of course not, <laughs> darling. Uh, then why is he dressed to replace me? Take off my costume. Snodgrass sings tonight. Of course you do. Oh, but every star must have an understudy. Oh, you? My, my understudy? <laughs> yes, it came as quite a blow to me, too, but it was the only job I could get. And Alan's taking it like a man. Oh, that's good acting. <laughs> no, it's not, Grass. That's show business. We older chaps must make room for you younger men. Oh, I suppose. How old are you, Trent? I may not look it, but I'm older than you. Yes, you look it. But you're right, Alan, old boy. Youth must be served. Oh, and what a lovely dish to be served. To the victor go the spoils. Oh, yes. I... Who's spoiled? No, no, no. Who? Irene is your leading lady now. The spotlight is yours. The applause is yours. And for me, nothing. Oh, but buck up, old man. Cheer up. Mother, cheer him up. Cheer up, Mr. Trent. As long as you know you won't amount to anything, Stanley can get you a job driving one of his father's coal wagons. Oh, sure. You can even have the old one I used to use with a dirty old man to keep you company. He's yours. Stanley, it's oh. almost curtain time. Are you sure you remember all the changes we made in the opening scene? Well, I remember most of the moves. We've rehearsed and rehearsed, and he still can't remember the lines. Well, the lines are the least of our worries. <laughs> but, but, but I, I planted them all on stage. On stage? You can't possibly miss them. Five minutes, Mr. Snodgrass. One way or another, you're going to make history on that stage tonight. Good luck, Snodgrass. All around. Ready, fellow. Tonight, tonight is ours. That's, that's funny. What, Stanley? Irene Bailey just kissed me, but I still taste Daisy. <laughs>
chic. I must have his embrace. When he's near me, dear me, I'll tell him to his face. Oh, I'm a baba, be my baby. Take me by the hand. Maybe we'll make love, or maybe on the desert sand. On the desert sand. Alabama, sell your harem, why pay all that rent? Send your harem, harem, scare him, come into my tent. Ah, come into my tent. Forget the lady waiting in Persia. I'm a girl who really prefers you. When a dreamy melody stirs you, you just come to me. Jimmy dances doing his socko. Try to tempt you back in Morocco. Try to chase him off of the block. Oh, you belong to me. Alibaba, be my baby. I'm at your command. Maybe make some love, or maybe on the desert sand. Ah, on the desert sand. On the desert sand. Grape. I'll pour him some wine. I'll show him a shape that is mine, all oh, mine. We both have a horse, but mine is big and white. Come on, my horse, my horse, we'll ride off in the night. Maybe make some love, or maybe on the desert sand. Some love, or maybe on the desert sand, on the desert sand, on the desert sand, huh? Greetings, wives of the Sultan. I have come to meet your husband. His Majesty, the Sultan of Coos Bay. I... Yes. I am the Princess of Punjapa. Will you speak with me? Yes. Your ministers would wage war against my people. I have come to ask you, would you really fight a woman? Yes. My ministers do not control me, O oh Princess, of magnificent beauty. Only I make the decisions that are continued on Next Girl. <laughs> decisions that are found in my hat. <laughs> Heart. Then, sir, you do not want war. War? <laughs> war. No. Then we need not go on the battlefield. We can settle our differences here, in the harem. Or do you have too many women now? No. How many wives does the Sultan have? Six and seven eighths. I mean, 50. I will do anything to keep my people from war. What do you want of me? Oh, Princess, stay, and I will have my ministers draw a pack of peace. Peace. Peace.
This is just to relieve the monotony. Either Daisy is right or this is the toughest audience I ever met. Goodbye. He's in that upper box. Get him. Yes, sir. We got him trapped this time. Good work, Logan. What happened to Smart Grip? He's out and you're in. Logan's trapped the slasher. Well, I'm ready. He's not up here. He moves fast. But he was up here. How could he have gotten by either way? Try the next box. Get a move on. Starring again, and Snodgrass headed for his old man's coal wagon. It's like a nightmare has ended. And now to throw Snodgrass out of Alan's dressing room with my own little bare hands. Fraser, Jack the Slasher's disappeared. You. 
You, you said you had him. He's somewhere in this theater. He won't leave without killing Snodgrass. Oh, you'll never get Stanley to go on again. He knows about the slasher. You can't trap the rat if you remove the cheese. Get Snodgrass back on that stage. Now, hurry up. If that's Jack the Slasher, there's nobody here. This is Mr. Fraser, Mrs. Snodgrass. Please open the door. I have to talk to Stanley. He isn't here. Oh, please, Mrs. Snodgrass. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Stanley, come out of there. Please. Darling. I'm not your darling. Oh, st Look, Stanley. I know how you feel, but you can't be selfish at a time like this. Look, if you don't go out on that stage, I'm going to have to close the show. Everybody will be out of work. Musicians, actors, chorus boys, chorus girls. Ushers, stagehands, cleaning women. If I close the show, they'll be penniless, starving, alone, on Christmas Eve. That ain't no skin off my nose. Stanley, Stanley, for all that we've meant to each other, go out there on that stage with me, hand in hand. I'm not leaving this closet without a police escort. <laughs> Will you do it for me? No, but you've got a good argument there. Stanley, don't you let them talk you into anything. Oh, don't you worry. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but not some of the people all of the time. And I'm some of the people. Don't you see, Stanley, this is the chance of a lifetime. Yeah, but I want more time in my lifetime. Look at me, I've still got my baby fat. Nothing can happen to you. We have policemen all over the theater. Yeah, where were they when Jack the Slasher was playing Mumbly Peg? And with my mumblies. What's more important, this show or Stanley's life? Please, Daisy, let's not ask each other unfair questions. Snodgrass, we've got to have you out on that stage. Here's your answer. I'm turning in your earrings. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll give you anything you want. $300 a week. A new dressing room. Your name in colored lights. No. Colored lights? Don't! Even if you survive, they'd only fire you tomorrow. Yeah, how about that? If I go through with this, I want to run to the play contract. Do you think I'm crazy? No, right, as a matter of fact, I am crazy. I'll do it. If you get out on that stage and stay there, I'll give you a run of the play contract. Harry, Harry, you're going too far. You keep out of this. We're talking business. Stanley, I forbid you. Mama, I'm breaking loose from your apron strings. Lay out my costume. Costume? <laughs> Lay out a shroud, a darn fool. Shroud? Mama, maybe you better forbid me again. Oh, no, you don't. You agreed to stay out in front of that audience until the slasher had a chance. What I mean is you made an agreement with me and you can't back out now. Now get in that circus wardrobe. Come on. Mama, do I have to? Yes, you do, Stanley. A snodgrass is always a man of his word. But, Mama, you let me say the wrong word. there and stay there or you'll be back on your daddy's coal wagon in the morning. No, I don't have to go on that stage, you know. That's true. There's a fortune in the coal business. Well, at least turn off the spotlight or the slasher will see me. But that's the idea. Oh. All hail this great 
charity circus assembled by our beautiful and wealthy hostess with the greatest performers in all Europe. Let us go on with the show for sweet charity's sake. Get out from behind me, you idiot. You're my leading lady. Leave me out of here. Fellows, especially in front of me. Slower, slower. Stop it, stupid. Get out of here. Hey, take it down. Keep me covered. Hey, hey, get down. Keep me covered. Will you? Hmm? Let him down. I have you let him down. Right. Stanley sure takes off the part of a yellow belly real good, don't he? Any messages? Clowns, bring on the clowns. The Fraser must be cutting down. Clown with snodgrass. Already. We ought to never make love to Irene again. I got enough to worry about the show, Jack the Slasher. Jack the Slasher! Hey! Help! Police! Mama! Oh, oh, oh don't kill me, Slasher! I don't. I... Sure, that clown is Moretti. I know my own cast. Stop, stop! My fingers are slipping off my hands! Oh! Oh, that was a wonderful trick, young man. Oh, it was nothing. Any red blooded American eagle could do it. <laughs> I... Thanks for letting me drop in on you. It was part of the show. What a novel idea. Dang, lady. I found him trussed up in his dressing room. Moretti! Then that clown is Jack the Slasher. Oh, my first time. <laughs> you can't shoot out into that crowd. We'll close in on it. Come on. No, I'm not Irene's lover. I'm Stanley Snodgrass. That's Jack the Slasher. Stop that man. Oh, I do stop that. Pardon. Pardon. Get away from here. Oh, please. Hey, get off my lap. No one's coming the other way. Oh. Oh. Don't stand there. Get the police. make you pay. Oh, oh, please, Mr. Slasher. I can't stand the sight of blood, especially mine. I take him out this way and be careful of that costume. Okay. Stanley, my boy, my son, speak to me. Mama, can I have my name in lights on my tombstone? Stanley, you're too young to die. Mama, please, let's stop kidding ourselves. My boy, what have they done to my boy? Daddy, I'm on my way to that big coal yard up yonder. Oh, oh goodbye, Daisy. Is that all you have to say, darling? It's too late to tell you I love you. I'm sorry about those evenings I wasted on your front porch when we could have been on the back porch. That's all I wanted to hear you say. If you really love me, then I'm going with you. Oh, Daisy, don't. We don't even know whether we'll wind up in the same place. I'm going with you. Oh, oh that's right. right to your dressing room. How do you like that, Jack the Slasher? 
using a trick knife. You can't trust anybody these days. He's alive. Who's responsible for this? And he's got a run of the place. Wish me good luck, Mrs. Snodgrass. Please don't try to go out there again, Stanley. Someday we'll have children and I want them to have a father. Once, just once I get on that stage, then I can think about becoming a father. Hurry, Daisy. Overture's on. Tonight I'm going to make it. Don't be a fool, Stanley. For two years now, at every performance, something's happened to keep you off that stage. Give up, boy. Albert, a snodgrass never quits. This is the night I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> the ones that aren't broken. Snodgrass is on. Oh, Albert! Butterfingers! Oh, Snodgrass, how have you been these past two years? Well, mostly unconscious, but tonight the audience will get what it paid to see. I'm sure it will. Oh, there's our cue. Come along. They're pretty careless around here. You could have fallen. Yes. You can go home, folks. I'll never make it. Girls are 